Welcome to Maker Camp. Boy, we're really exciting show for today. We are today we're having high tech circuits mixing that with uh, low tech crafting. Uh, our today's guest is a uh, PhD candidate at MIT's Media Lab, and she's found a way to take electronics from the breadboard and move it to stickers. That's right, stickers. We'll be crafting electronics today with Gigi. It's going to be so fun. I'm so excited. Plus, we have our weekly visit to Sam and Joe's Corner and today's project, Simple Paper Circuits. Yeah, so get ready, get excited. Let's make something great. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I'm Camp Director Paloma. And I'm Camp Director Burke. We're really excited to have you guys here today, tomorrow, and for the next four weeks of Maker Camp. Now remember, the great thing about the internet is it's a two-way street. So if you have any questions or comments, go on over to the Google Plus Maker Camp community page and submit them. Later in the show, we'll take a look at them and answer a few. And if you want to possibly appear live with us in the future, go to the Maker Camp homepage and submit the Hangout participant form. Now, before we meet today's guest, let's go live over to our camp counselors where they'll talk about today's project. Counselors, how's it going? Very good. I'm Counselor Brian. And I'm Counselor Winter. We have pictures and videos of your projects. The Des Plain teams are making paper circuits. That looks very familiar. It's, it's very in the theme of today's show. Yeah, it's really cute. I love them. I love the campers get these projects done so early, too. They're yeah, ahead they're, of the game. They're on top of it. Yeah, absolutely. Marshmallow shooters are coming together at the Guadalupe Public Library. Huge marshmallow are awesome. They yeah. are awesome. That is a really great and simple project to start with. And, you know, it's, it's ammo you can eat. So. <laughs> What's better than that, right? <laughs> It is a great first projectile project if you've got a, a young camper that definitely likes to see things fly through the air. Yes. They're crafting with LEDs at the Pacifica Library. Everything's better with LEDs, right? Seriously, so it true. is the spice of life. So cute. I love the face. Like, look what I just made. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of satisfaction there. Yeah, you know, you never you never cease to get amazed with your first your first LED project. It's so fun. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where you get really uh, uh, encouraged by something that seems so distant from what you're capable of doing, and then finding out how easy it is. Yeah, LED is not that hard, and no. it just opens up the world for you. Yeah. And Camper Yeshua has made an Arduino piano. Not hard to do it with one hand, but completely made it out of Legos and Arduino stuff. Wow. Oh, I love that. Brian, make me one. That's amazing. Okay. I'll get right on that. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> Post your projects to the community page. Show us what you made, what you learned, and what you want to make next. So, speaking of paper circuits, today's project is actually doing simple paper circuits. All you need is a piece of paper some copper tape, which you can pick up at hardware stores and various other craft stores, a battery, preferably a small coin cell, very easy to use and easy to get, and some components, such as an LED. All you do is place the copper tape in a circuit that you can do artistically or very simple, uh, place down the components using the tape, such as the LED as well as the battery, and whenever you fold the, the paper over, which you have your traces, you can complete the circuit, connecting both sides of the LED to each side of the battery. One of the other cool things is once you get the hang of it, you can actually make stuff a little more advanced, which this is a project that Paloma did um, using uh, circuit stickers, which we'll be talking about later today. It's a very simple circuit, placing the stickers in a artistic form as well as adding her own design touch to it. Uh, I will post pictures of this on the community page later on after the Hangout to show it working, since this is more of a table version that she made and it's hard to show on camera. Over to you at Maker Camp HQ. Thanks so much, Camp Counselors. And that was a really fun project. You know, that, 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 uh, that product was actually made by our first guest, and I am going to bring them, her on in just a second. But I just want to say, I am so excited for you to make your, your paper, simple paper circuits, and I am going to put a challenge out there to you campers. I want someone to make a purple paper, purple paper eater. 
a, a circuit that is a purple paper reader because that would be so cool. And uh, and definitely play around with those and post your pictures on the community page because I'm just I'm just gonna start challenging you guys to stuff because yeah. you always you always like figure out a way to do it before the hangout's even over. And if you don't want to make a purple paper people eater, <laughs> uh, you could also make a duck related one. I'm I'm looking for ducks today. I think that's our theme. We're so. challenging you to do a bunch of stuff because you're so good at it. Yes. But okay, I'm gonna bring on our first guest because I am so excited about this. This guest combined crafting with electronics, as you've already seen. Chibitronics is, is the, the um, over umbrella thing that she does, and she made circuit stickers. So, Chi, thank you so much for joining us, and welcome to Maker Camp. Hi, um, I'm G. so excited to be here with you guys um, and share with you more about what, what I'm up to. So, yeah, thanks so much for having me here. We're so excited to have you. <laughs> All right, so uh, usually... One of the things is that, when, at least when I think of electronics, or, or a lot of our campers out there, they think of soldering. And uh, you've blown that out of the water. That's, that's, that's yesterday's news for us. Um, you, you've managed to, to make electronics have a nice low point of entry, very easy and simple to use. What, what was the idea that inspired you to make uh, a circuit paper? Yeah, so it actually started with my research here um, at the MIT Media Lab, where I'm a grad student. Um, I, th we're looking at how do we combine um, hardware, electronics, circuits, programming with other things, especially things like arts and crafts, which a lot of people get and love, because we want to get more people excited about making their own technologies. And so for me, I'm a huge paper geek. I love paper, I love origami. Um, I think it's beautiful and fun to play with. And so for me, I was like, maybe I'll turn these two things that I love um, together the you know the beautiful crafty artistic part of paper with the magical um, interactive parts of electronics. So you can see here um, is an earlier project that I did where um, I was told make some sensors out of paper. But what I was like in my head I was thinking well if I'm gonna make these on my own I don't have to make a sensor look like a button or a regular sensor. I can make it look like a flower or you know the Empire State Building. And that's kind of the magic moment where I was like dude, if you can make your own electronics, you can make it beautiful or like funny or creepy or whatever. And that's kind of what got me really excited about this. And so these are all pages from an earlier pop-up book that I made. Um, this one is a Venus flytrap that when you touch the leaves, the gray ones, it actually closes up on your finger like a real Venus flytrap. And then it blinks a little bit. It's really cool. So I can post a video on that um, on your uh, community page and we can check it out. Um, this one is uh, the blue page. It's actually got two star sensors that you can put your fingers on. You can see I'm doing that. And when you do that, it plays twinkle, twinkle, little star. And so it's not just lights. There's like sound and like motion and all sorts of cool stuff. Um, so, so that was kind of what got me started into this. And then ever since, I've been like, you know, it's, it's so exciting. I want to share this um, magical way of making with everybody else. And that's what kind of got me into the more um, looking at the tools and different materials that we can use for, for making electronics. Yeah, um, those look so great. And I love that they yes. are they are interesting and they're definitely hard tech but they let you think outside of the breadboard if you will where you can everything becomes able to become a circuit and you get a really awesome expression of, of, of art and technology which is where I love I love combining those as well and yes. you know I was just wondering if you could show us how you would go about building a circuit um, yeah, so um, we can go ahead and get started with um, an example, a little circuit project um, with the stickers. Uh, so we'll grab, grab a little book here. So, so this, um, this little guy here is a little book that I wrote um, that actually explains to you how to um, build a circuit. So here um, it shows you, like, you know, these are the parts of a circuit. You've got your power supply, that's your battery. You've got your LED, that's the part that glows. And you have your wires that connect them together to make a, a complete circuit. But the neat thing is, um, because we're using paper, because we're using now these these stickers and copper tape, you can do it like right in the book. So here's an example circuit that I made in the book already. Um, we can just add a little battery here. And I'm going to go ahead and flip it down, and then you see that um, little light just turned on? That's because it's an LED sticker instead of a regular sticker. Um, and the part that I find really exciting is once you've got your light, um, you can turn the page, and you realize 
ta-da, you just lit up a light bulb. And so what do you see in the room? I don't know. That's up to you. You have to draw the picture and use your own imagination. So, so this is the circuit sketchbook. And now I'm going to show you guys how I actually made that. So we're going to go on to another circuit. Um, so the next one, once you've got one light, you're, you're probably like me where you're like, I want to do more lights. So how do you do that? Um, you can do that with a parallel circuit where you can connect multiple LEDs to one battery and then get even more light going with just one battery. So here's the directions and here's the template. So it starts out with gray lines and then what I'm going to do is very carefully I'm going to take this copper tape right here and put it over the template. And so our copper tape, it's going to act like the wire in our circuit. So step one, I'm going to take some copper tape, um, looks like this, and you peel off the tape from the paper backing so that you get the sticky part exposed like that. Now I've got my template here, right? And so I'm just going to follow the lines. There's a gray line here. So I'm going to stick it down like that. And then at the turn, um, I'm going to just fold the tape over a little bit um, to keep it continuous. Because the trick is you don't want to tear your tape um, just in case, because sometimes the glue is actually acts as an insulator, which means electricity doesn't connect conduct as well through it. So I'm just going to, instead of tearing the tape and then taping multiple ones together, I'm just going to fold it. So here you go. And I actually have a tip for that. When I was making yeah. uh, the one that I did, I found that it was a little challenging sometimes to have a really large uh, scale something, you know, because I had all these little branches on the ones I did. So if you really do have to have two pieces of copper tape come together, I just took a little push pin and one. stabbed it through the copper tape oh. and it allowed the... Uh, the connection to go through and it allowed it to really kind of work conduct very well. So campers, wow. if you get a little ambitious with your copper tape or you break it on accident, you can kind of patch it like that sometimes and it works out. Well it's a really great suggestion. I never thought of that. So I'm like learning with you guys all the time. And if you guys have more tips like that, please do share because I think we're all kind of this is all so new that like every Every time I make something, I'm learning something new. So I'll bet you guys will be discovering all sorts of things, too. So um, here I go. I'm putting on my second little tr line here. So this one's going from the minus battery to the minus parts of the LED. Yeah, because LEDs, as we, as we mentioned before, LEDs are polarized. So you have the, uh, usually on normal LEDs that have the, uh, that are non-sticker varieties that have leads, the longer one is positive and the shorter one is negative. And you want to hook it up that way, like we did earlier this week with the wearable electronics. So um, that's that's how you can connect them on your on your paper. But once you get the okay. circuit stickers, they actually have a little plus and minus on the sticker, so it's really easy to remember which way to put them on. Yeah, even I can yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. Even you <laughs> can build build circuits. Oh. Work. <laughs> and the fun thing about the stickers is even if you put them on backwards, you can always kind of lift them up a little bit and try again. So um, I've got my copper tape now. So instead of gray lines, we've got copper, which means these can conduct electricity. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, add an LED. So those look like these little sticker guys here. So there's six LEDs here, and they're shaped like arrows precisely because I was, um, they are directional, which means they have a plus end and a minus end. And you guys can see here, the plus end is the wide part, and the minus end is the pointy part. So that's the sticker. It's sticky, so it's just stuck to my finger. But very soon, I'm going to put it down onto my little circuit here, and you can see the wide end is touching the outside copper, and that's going to go to the plus of my battery. And then the pointy end is going to the minus um, copper and that's going to the minus of the battery. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to bend my little corner over and that's my little paper battery holder. And then as soon as I put in a battery, the light turns on. So I'm going to redo that. So open the battery holder and lights off. And when I close the battery holder, whoop, light goes on. And so I'm going to use my handy little binder clip to hold my um, battery in place and so now you've got your light and you've got your circuit but we were talking about earlier we want more lights right because this is a parallel circuit and more lights are always more fun so we've got everything in place now we've got another sticker and as soon as you put it down and we can see here and I press it the light turns on so there it is and there's another little light 
And then just for good times, I'm going to choose another one. This one's going to be blue, so we've got yellow, red, and blue. I'm going to put my last sticker up top here. And there you go. And it's three shining little LED stickers. And you might be wondering, you know, what's the scene this time? So you flip the page, and ta-da! We've lit up the sky. And there's my little yellow guy coming back here. There we go. So three little stars. Or maybe this one's like Mars or something. I don't know. So there, there's your example picture. And you can add more stars if you like just by adding more LEDs to your parallel circuit. So yeah. this is like folded up origami circuitry. And I think, I think we actually, that reminds me of a video that you brought with you where you actually oh, yeah. have folded origami circuits. So let's yeah. take a look at that, and you can maybe explain what that is and how it works. Sure. So in this video, you can see what's happening. When I fold the red paper, it's actually got a circuit on it, also made with copper tape, that has a fold sensor. When I fold it, um, when I fold the red paper, the white paper actually has muscle wire in its paper that causes it to move the flaps. So that's kind of what's happening in, in between these two. And so the neat thing about all the circuitry stuff um, with copper tape is it's flat and it's flexible, so you can put it on all sorts of surfaces. Like, you know, three, you can put your circuit down and then you can fold it up into a three-dimensional origami. Or um, you can do kind of like what I did here. I made a little origami fish, um, and I just put, um, I just taped a circuit around it because, you know, there's stickers. You can stick it anywhere you could put a sticker, right? So here's a little goldfish with googly eyes, and when I squeeze it, it, it turns the little tail on. So you can do all sorts of things like that. Um, but yeah. Um, and yeah. That it's, you, you just showed one of those examples there. Um, that's uh, just a beginning of the eclectic range of uh, components that you can use with these circuits. Like what, what else, what other kind of parts can we use to uh, construct um. anything we want? Good question. So um, we have lights, and you can see there's different colored lights. But um, I also made um, these stickers that are effect stickers. And what that means is here's an example circuit of that. Um, when you turn it on, it actually makes your light flicker or twinkle. So this one, the, the light is actually um, uh, pulsing. like you can kind of see above. So by putting this triangular sticker in, it's actually um, a function generator, which means instead of being always on, it sometimes turns your light on, sometimes it turns your light off. So you can see right now that effect is happening. And there's different effects, like uh, flickering like a star, or blinking like a heartbeat, various things. And you just change the rhythm by changing out the sticker. So thinking about almost like programming with stickers, you choose the interaction by putting down a different one. So that's um, one idea. And then we've also made some sensors. Um, so here is a little circuit of, with a sound sensor in it. I'm going to put on the battery, and then I can show you guys what that looks like. You know, I love that your stickers can go from mm -hmm. something very simple like LEDs, but they grow with your knowledge. So as you get a little bit more daring, you can start adding mm -hmm. more and more complicated components to be able to get something mm -hmm. that's really intricate and impressive. So I, that's that, I think that's my favorite thing is that you can immediately start making something interesting and awesome and then you yeah. can carry it with you as you gain knowledge. That's a, that's a really good point. And yeah, actually speaking of which, I found a more complex circuit that might be better illustrates that. So here it's actually three different things. Down here we've got a light sensor. It's yellow when it's bright and then it kind of turns out when it's darker. So you can kind of see I'm blocking the sensor and the light's going out. And then when I unblock the sensor, the light comes back on. And then here, when I yell into it, the red light turns on because there's a, a light sensor. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that, but I, it's happening pretty pretty right here. Um, and yeah, then the yeah, last one... Wow. Okay, cool. Um, and the last one is this guy, which is the microcontroller. And this one, uh, right now, it's... Um, a touch sensor so that when I touch it you have these lights coming on but it's actually um, a, a nat tiny which means you can use Arduino to reprogram it to do um, whatever whatever you want basically and so you can right you can start out with simple LED lights but then you can build up from there um, to create more complex interactions like these ones um, 
and uh, kind of an interesting story. So this is actually my, my sketchbook. This is where I um, come out with uh, different ideas and I, I kind of think and prototype all in one place because with you know paper circuits you can put in, in things like books um, and, and I thought that was really fun and this is actually the um, microcontroller that I used to design the code that's on all of the microcontroller stickers so that was kind of fun. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 really mind blowing to see that because in in application we we like to divide the world into oh well this is a book and this is you know electronics and combining those two also opens up a really neat point. One of the things I really like about this project in general and what you're doing here is that you're you're showing a fundamental step in in making, which is when you see something complex, break it down into easy steps, and it's much easier to understand how the world works and how anything really works. Mm -hmm. um, if you break it down into simple components and, and tackle them one step at a time. Exactly, yeah. So yeah, make or camp yeah, top exactly. tip right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's such a good point because for me one of the hardest parts about making these circuitry is when it doesn't work. Like when the light doesn't turn on like I expect it to. Um, and to be honest that happens all the time. In fact when I first learned to build circuits I just set like everything on fire for like a month straight and so but it was through that process of like destroying everything but I really learned how it all worked right it's um, when you don't know what you're doing and when you really take risks and sometimes they're real risks so things go wrong like that's when you actually learn something that's when you actually get comfortable with something and honestly if something breaks it's not usually not the end of the world so so that's a really good tip and I just want to say like absolutely in a half yeah, um, that's, that's great for the campers I mean and we talk about this all the time but no matter what you make, even if it doesn't turn out the way that you thought it would, you're learning something and you're yeah. able to pick up what you learned and apply it to your next project and your next project. And that's why I absolutely love, especially the book that you showed us in the beginning, because I, I've played with that book and they actually, like, it steps through each page and allows you to really pick up each piece. And mm -hmm. you, you start with just basic stuff, and then yeah. you add something and add something, and you're able to create your own. So you can start to get a little daring with what you're trying to make and get a little, a little uh, step, yeah. step your toe, dip your toe into the water of creating your own circuit. Yeah, and, and, and let your ambitions slowly build up as you acquire more knowledge, as you understand things a little bit better. Like that's a thing. That's a really important part, especially when you're first starting off with something completely new, completely different. Exactly, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. great. For that. And, and one thing that um, I found really fun about all this is like you can get really crazy and explore the circuit side if you want and that's super fun. If you want to, you can also explore the art and craft side and make something like really, really pretty and even though this circuit might be simple, you can still make something really, really amazing. Um, and so, so that's something that I want to um, share. Um, so, so an example of that um, I liked that I was really proud of that I made recently was um, this project um, of, of just a sailboat and then some lights. And so it's a simple circuit with just LEDs and some switches, but I made the switches down in the waves. Um, and so what happens is when you add your power, every circuit needs a power supply. So I'm giving it this little battery here, and then you close the switch by running your hand um, or your finger across the waves, the stars in the sky kind of twinkle where the where the boat is. And again, it's, you know, no sensors, no crazy, or no no advanced programming, which is also cool. Just some lights and some, some blue paper and a little origami boat, and you've got, like, a really cool scene. And that's also totally fun to explore, too, especially when you're starting out with the circuit part, but you love the crafts. It's totally awesome to explore um, the craft side as well. I think. Yeah, so. and I definitely think that's, that aligns perfectly with the theme of this week where we're talking about making and art and design and this just brings all of that together in a really fun package. And you yeah. know, these, these, these whole designs are just so interesting and innovative and new and I mean now that you think about it you're like, oh duh, that's totally something that should have been done before but it's really like, it's really innovative yeah. and you know, I'm just wondering like how did you get into this kind of this kind of making and what inspired you to really kind of take this step and, and move in this direction? Um, I, so I guess I've, I'm 
first of all, I'm kind of a huge paper geek, right? So I love paper. I love the. I even love the way it smells. It's a little funny, but um, and I like the way it sounds when I fold it and crinkle it. So I've kind of been doing that all along. But to be very honest, actually, when I started out in college, um, I thought I was going to be a doctor. I was going to be a surgeon, and I even um, did some tissue engineering research. I like worked with cells in a lab with like a white coat and blue gloves and everything. Um, but on the weekends, I would I would just make stuff on my own, um, and it got to the point where like I would stay up late just to make something um, and because it felt good and I realized okay so maybe I could I could think about doing this a little bit more um, and that's when I explored and I learned about this whole um, idea of combining arts with technology um, through through learning about the media lab actually it's this place where people who just kind of love a bajillion different things come together um, and they kind of try it all at once rather than trying them separate which is what I was kind of doing and so so when I came here um, I started working with my advisor Leah Beakley who made these amazing sewable um, circuits called the lily pad um, uh, set and um, that's kind of when I when I realized this was possible and what was really neat about that is I always loved um, you know making stuff with paper but I also really loved making things move and glow and things with electronics but um, up until then they were both to kind of interesting on their own but when I could somehow invent ways to put them together it made the paper craft even cooler because suddenly these beautiful things were interactive but it also made the tech stuff really cool too because it made all of these fun interactive um, circuit electronic hardware things uh, beautiful it suddenly made them have like a personality or a story and, and I thought that was that was kind of amazing, and I've just been hooked ever since, and now I'm trying to share it with everyone else because I think it's so fun. Yeah. Well, yeah, gee, it's 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 perfect reason to be hooked on to that. I mean, right now, like, I'm I'm wishing I could go back in time and, and have this go to my 10-year-old self because I, I worked with paper all the time when I was younger, oh, yeah. and, and to add electronics to that would have, I, I mean, it would have opened my eyes up to a whole new world. Um, but anyway, uh, G, thank you so much for showing us uh, everything at Maker Camp today. Uh, that that's got me really excited, and I, I I actually cannot wait until I see some of the questions and comments we're gonna get on our Google yeah. Plus Maker Camp community. Yeah, page. they're gonna run wild like, with this. I cannot wait. I, I'm like I'm like I want to look at the page right now and see what they're doing. Yeah, but yeah. Just rush off it and just check it out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's really fantastic what you're doing there. So seriously, thank you. Uh, for uh, allowing us to open that door into electronics and making it so much more accessible, and also showing us that that art and electronics and and science are two sides of the same coin, really. Yeah. Like they they blend together. Definitely, they really they really have a really awesome awesome combinations, and you you get I think you get things that are cooler than both of them individually when you combine them for sure. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, cool. and, yeah. and G, thank you so much for being with us, and please stay with us because we were, we're going to get so many questions coming in from the campers that I I can't wait. So, but first, we have our weekly trip to Sam and Joe's corner, and they're going to be showing us some ways to make stencils that you can put on anything. But a quick note about this video is when you are working with spray paint, make sure that you use it in a well ventilated area and preferably wearing a mask. So. Yeah, make sure there's lots of breathable air flowing around. You, you don't want to be closed off when you're using uh, spray cans. I've, exactly. I've definitely always made sure I had proper ventilation before I do that. But right now, here we go to Sam and Joe's Corner. Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about some spray painting techniques, the first of which is stenciling. Using this method you can transfer your favorite design or logo onto just about anything, like I've done here with this water bottle. Today we're going to be putting our logo onto this water bottle. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have a version of your design with very clear and defined edges. Next, get a clean cutting board from your kitchen and put down some layers of masking tape. The tape is what we'll actually use to stencil the design onto the water bottle. And so it's important to cut out shapes that are on the inside of other objects first so that you can use the paper 
template on top to transfer the design on. I'm just going to cut a big rectangle that's a little bit bigger than the area we're going to be working with. It doesn't have to be exact. Now go ahead and wrap the rest of the newspaper around the bottle. And now you've got your uh, stencil and your bottle and it's all ready to paint. When you're spray painting, make sure to stay about a foot away from your work surface and do nice, uh, even passes. And really keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't start dripping or bubbling. Okay, so I've put one coat down. I'm going to let this dry for about 10 minutes, and then I'll do one more coat of white, and then we'll move on to the colors. Um, now we're going to do the red S. So get a scrap of paper and use that to mask off everything that's not going to be red. Once you've got your piece masked, Go ahead and get your red spray paint and paint yes. We have repeated the masking and painting process for all three colors here, and it's cured overnight. So we're ready to unwrap it and see how we did. And there you go. Successful custom stencil on a water bottle. I'm Sam. I'm Joe, and we'll see you guys next week. back with Crafting Electronics today at Maker Camp. Um, we were just talking with uh, co-founder of Chibitronics, uh, Chi Chi, and now we're going to field some questions from some of our campers out there. Counselors, what do you got for us? So our first question is from Vishal, uh, and he wants to know, are there any other types of tape that conduct electricity, and what makes something conductive? Hmm. Both good questions. Um, uh, first one, there are all different kinds of tapes. Um, it doesn't have to be copper, so good point. There's um, all sorts of tapes, like there's aluminum tape. Any sort of metal tape will work. In fact, you don't have to use tape. Like I've used um, aluminum foil from my kitchen uh, to, to pa make paper circuits, and the only challenge there is you just got to make sure that you glue it down in place okay and it doesn't tear. Um, so basically any sort of metallic tape will work. Um, just watch out because some tapes look like they're shiny metal but they're actually plastic and so that won't conduct electricity as well. Well that won't conduct electricity at all actually. Um, and so your, that brings me to your second question which is what causes something to conduct electricity? Um, well so uh, basically different materials conduct electricity um, to different amounts, but for th making circuits, basically you want to look for something that's um, made out of metal, or in some cases um, you can use graphite, which is like the the uh, lead in your pencil that kind of conducts electricity uh, okay too. Um, so there's um, all different kinds of materials, but basically look for metal. Um, Carbon pencil graphite is another common conductor. If I were you, I would just go around your house and like find stuff and try it out for yourself. Um, and what makes them conduct is actually down in the kind of down into the, the crystal scale of um, the material themselves. Essentially, c electricity is electrons flowing, and certain materials allow the electrons to flow better than other materials. It won't get too deep into that, but we can definitely talk more about that um, on the community page if you guys want to learn more. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And, and, and you know, I, the funny thing that I found out recently is that electrons don't even actually move that fast. They only they actually move really slowly, but it's the the energy that's transferring between them that actually sends that's moving really quickly. Um, oh, that's a good yeah, point. <laughs> really interesting. I think it's like eight and a half centimeters per hour or something yeah. crazy. Yeah, like that. Yeah, it's I never knew that. Wow. Because yeah. you think it's going really really fast, but yeah, super it's, it's, slow. Yeah, it's slow. Yeah. Traveling through at that pace, yeah. and uh, mm. really interesting point that you brought up uh, using aluminum foil um, for our campers out there. 
Yes, that means that you could start coming up with intricate patterns for uh, and shapes for your circuits. See, they, they don't have to follow a simple line. You can get really creative with that. And I think that's yeah. really neat because now you can make drawings yeah. that, that yeah. you can now have the circuits running through them themselves. Exactly. Really cool. and in fact, I even have an example of what that might look like. Of course um, you do. You're so prepared. <laughs> yeah. So that's a really good point. You can use your 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 copper or metal line as a drawing line as well as a, a, a circuit line. So here I actually made a thank you card that says thank you um, using the copper lines and of course you know you gotta add some power to make it do something. So here it says thank you and the O is uh, turning on and I hit a switch underneath it so when you press on the O it causes um, two more lights to blink and that's fun. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so the card is actually a little robot um, and with a little heart that glows. But when you give him some love by pressing on his heart, his cheeks blush, blink, because, you know, robots, when they blush, they actually blink because, you know, that's, that's how they adorable. work. So, but, yeah, just wanted to share. <laughs> so, so we've learned a valuable lesson today, campers, that robots can feel love. <laughs> <laughs> they just blink it out. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so cool. I love that. That's so That's adorable. Great. That's great. Campers, <laughs> make sure that you post some of your projects on to our community page because I want to see more of this stuff. I want I want to see artists really diving into, you know, basic electronics, really blending their skills together because we're we're in a world today where that's successful, more easier to understand than ever and, you know, let, let's blend things. Yeah, and you know, get creative with it too, because I know that you don't always use these on paper either. You yeah. use them on other surfaces, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, you don't. But it's sticky, right? Like you can think of stickers. Where where can you put stickers? All over the place. On your clothes, on your face, on things that you love. One uh, experiment that I actually did was I I wanted to decorate my office. So this is my lab space. This is my desk where I make all sorts of stuff. And so you get there's a gigantic mess as usual. But um, I actually. <laughs> made a, a circuit on my window, which you guys can kind of see up top there. It's a bunch of clouds and um, a moon, and then in the background is a bunch of other buildings on MIT's campus. Um, and so they're actually kind of flickering right now um, in and out. But So you can imagine putting your um, circuit, you know, not just in your paper, not just in your book, but like all sorts of places, like your walls and ceilings and stuff. Yeah. How is that one powered? Is that a battery or is that solar powered? Oh, it's so, such a good question. I, I'm going to be hooking up, up to a solar panel because it's a window, right? But right now I, I, I hooked it up to some wires. You can kind of see the side uh, coming down. There's a line on the on the right there. There's two alligator clips, and those are going to the wall. <laughs> but good point. That's so creative, for sure. Campers, I want to see you try to step it up a little bit past that and uh, and see where where interesting places you can put your circuit stickers yeah. for sure. Yeah. Cool. And counselors, Council do we have else. another question coming through? Uh, yeah. Uh, Carly mentions that sometimes her circuits, when she's making them, her lights don't light up that well, um, and she wants to know if you have any suggestions to keep her LEDs bright. Uh, yeah, so that's really common, um, and in fact, all the time I'm wondering sometimes why my lights are flickering. So if you see that the lights are are turning on but they're flickering, it basically means that your circuit is right. Like you've got the right connections. It's just that the, the, the each connection might not be so strong. So what I try is I go around. I look at is my battery really really solidly connected to my circuit? Are the c connections between your your copper tape and your battery leg really strong? Um, you know, push down on things and if when you push down on it it stops flickering it just stays on really strong then you know that's where there's a connection issue and then maybe you just you know tape down harder or add a clip um, I've found actually using um, magnets sometimes can be really really helpful because you can just kind of stick them anywhere and they just automatically cling to each other and they kind of act like your finger you know holding it down in place without you having to actually hold anything in place um, so so that's those are things that I would try um, and otherwise if your lights don't turn on at all um, sometimes I think of uh, the circuit as a game of connect the dots where as long as you've made the right connections 
um, between your battery and your lights and didn't make any connections that you don't want, like your lines don't crisscross by accident, usually that basically makes it work. So I check, are there all, all the connections I want? If yes, great. Um, are there any connections that I don't want? Um, if, if not, then great. And basically, with those two rules, you'll get your circuit debugged, <laughs> essentially. That, at least, for, that's almost always works for me. Yeah, and my electronics teacher actually had a trick to make sure that you weren't, because sometimes you can um, be shorting out your circuit by having it touch, you know, the electricity won't go through the component, it'll go to itself. And so we actually would take two fingers on either side of the battery and trace the circuit and make sure your fingers didn't touch and that they only touch oh. the component. So that's another way, if you, if you want to get used to a little bit of debugging, just trace the circuit and see if you touch your fingers, then that's bad and you're shorting out your circuit. And then the electricity is just going through the battery. Because like we, we talked about this, I think, on, on a previous Hangout, that electricity wants to follow the path of least resistance. So if, it's just, if it can find a way to go through without having to go through a, a LED, which are hard to pass through, it'll just go straight to itself. It's a good trick. <laughs> Cool. And uh, counselors, I want to hear another camper question. What do we got? The Skylar asks, could we build a motherboard out of paper circuits, like a computer? Wow. You're already thinking thinking big, which is great. Um, well, so um, in some ways, the it, it depends on what you want to do. But actually, really, any circuit can turn into a sticker if you uh, add conductive adhesive to the back, right? Um, so uh, kind of a little bit about how these work. Essentially, they're just they're they're actually regular circuit boards that are flexible. And these circuit boards are the same circuit boards you might find in your keyboard or in a digital camera because they're light, so they, they don't weigh a lot. Um, certain things like cell phones and digital cameras, you want them to be light. Um, and also, they're um, they're flexible, so the circuit can be really big, but they fold it up almost like circuit origami, so that it fits inside like a little box, like your digital camera. So again, it's just a regular circuit board, um, and then we've added this special conductive ad adhesive to the back, so that when you stick it down, electricity can actually pass through the glue. Like that's the other special sauce of, of how this works. So you can imagine taking like any circuit board, even a really complex one like the motherboard in your computer, it'd be a really giant sticker, um, and then adding uh, conductive adhesive to the back, and then and then you could basically use that as a gigantic computer sticker. Um, so so technically yes, we haven't thought about doing that, but you know if you really want to, you can go out and give it a try. <laughs> That would be very impressive for the campers to do that in a day. Just post it. Just yeah, completely that's true. Just make their own circuit sticker computer. Yeah. <laughs> well, well com computers can be simple. Um, they they don't have to be like huge things with like screens on them, right? Like even even the little microcontroller sticker that I showed you earlier. That's basically a computer. It has um you know all the powers in in this little black box to you know receive a program and control different things and like do math and and all sorts of things. So computers can come in tiny packages too, depending on what you want to do. Um, so yeah, but thinking big is great. <laughs> And I know that your website has some really great pictures as well on it to be able to see what other people have done with your products. Uh, from everything like that little robot you showed all the way through things like that, that awesome mural on your window. So where can campers go if they want to be, uh, you know, look at more things like that and be a little bit more familiar with your circuit stickers? Yeah, so if you go to chibitronics.com, uh, C-H-I-B-I, T R O N I C S. I can post a link this to, to your community page as well. It, um, that is our website, which has like video tutorials on how you can build a circuit, um, and we also have a, a gallery, a Tumblr, um, circuitstickers.tumblr, where you can submit your projects and see what other people, like yourselves, um, have made. So, so that's all available online, and we so would love to see, um, you know, what y'all are up to. And also, um, this is a research project, so I'm in the middle of just designing these things, and I really want to hear what you guys think, so that you know we can make them even better and even more fun for you. So. Yeah, we were just like, please, please share what you think and what you guys have made. It's really cool to see. Yeah, campers, that's a call to action. Flood their Tumblr <laughs> with awesome circuits. Yeah, <laughs> about ducks and purple paper eater things. Exactly, ducks. So many ducks. So many. <laughs> and uh, counselors, uh, what? A, give us another question. I'm loving the questions that are coming in today. Uh, so Michael asks, uh, most LEDs call for a resistor. Mm -hmm. to control the power. Mm -hmm. uh, does this apply to more powerful sources as well? 
more powerful sources. More powerful power sources. Uh, right. Yeah. And so, yes, so um, the, the role of resistors is to protect too much power from thro flowing through your electronic components. So, like, um, the, the stronger your power source, the, the more you definitely would want your resistor in there. The interesting thing about um, a coin cell battery is actually that it's not super strong, which is why when you make certain circuits, like um, maybe just with an LED and copper tape and a battery, it's, it's pretty much okay because what actually happens is there's some resistance inside the battery that'll protect your LED from running too much power. But, for example, if I... Um, wanted to power my circuit with a stronger battery, like a rechargeable battery pack or even from like wall power, then you will definitely want to put a resistor in there because what's going to happen is um, the, the wall power is, is really strong and so it'll put as much power as can go through your LED, which is basically going to be too much for it and it's going to go poof and then your light will, won't turn on. I mean, so it's, it's, it's not the end of the world, but you'll be sad because your LED won't turn on. So <laughs> yeah, definitely add a resistor in there. Um, and a, a little note about the stickers is we've actually just put a teeny tiny resistor um, in there along with the LED, so you don't have to worry too much uh, about that for the stickers. But good, good to know. <laughs> yeah. So resistors are useful, useful things. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us. I mean, I just feel like you're just such a wealth of information about about circuits and circuit stickers. So I have just I've learned so much on this hangout, and Aww. I hope you have two campers. It's, it's been so fun. Thank you so much, G, for being with us and for sharing your awesome artwork. And also, I want to thank Sam and Joe's Corner for providing a very informative and fun video this week. And I, of course, like I do every week, every day even, I want to thank you campers for continually bringing me interesting and awesome ideas and filling my day with fun pictures and hangouts. Yeah, that's right. If uh, you also have any, uh, pro uh, want to show off Sam and Joe's uh, spray projects, feel free to post those on there as well. Um, but tomorrow, folks, oh, tomorrow, mm -hmm. we are, I don't know how much more excited we could possibly get for tomorrow because it is time to grab all your friends because we are heading over to Cartoon Network Studios mm -hmm. and we'll be talking with some of the creative geniuses that are behind uh, Uncle Grandpa, Regular Show, and Adventure Time. So, yeah, if you do not want to miss this one at all. I mean, we're going to be here, and it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. I can't, I, we will see you guys tomorrow, campers. Prepare yourselves for this fantastically fun field trip, alliteration galore. <laughs> and, campers, I know you were inspired today, as you've been inspired every day to do awesome stuff. So remember, do try this at home. Goodbye, campers. Yeah, bye. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>